Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back to chapter 11, where we're going to learn an awful lot about the motion of a particle of constant mass m in a central force field. Okay, so first we need to define what we mean by a central force field. So we have a particle of constant mass m moving in three space, three dimensional space, with our usual coordinate system, x, y, z, defined by the uh, unit vectors i, j, k. Okay, central force, the definition, it satisfies two properties. The force is always directed from M, the mass, towards or away from a fixed point. We'll call it O, the origin of our coordinate system. And the magnitude of the force only depends on the distance from that fixed point O. So this is a little picture that uh, makes that clear. We have our mass, particle of ma constant mass m, and the usual position vector r locating that mass. OK, so mathematically, those two properties translate into a form like this. The force is some function times just the distance from O to the mass times the unit vector R1, or which could be the position vector, divided by the length of the position vector, the same thing. Okay, now if f of R is less than zero, strictly less than zero, the force is said to be attractive towards the origin, and if it is strictly positive, the force is said to be repulsive from the origin. Now, the property, the particle moving under a force of this type, this central force, has three interesting properties that we'll start off with. The path of the particle must be a plane curve. What that means is that the particle moves in a plane. There's a fixed plane and it moves around, and we're going to consider that to be the xy plane in the coordinates that I just uh, described for you. And we proved that. That was one of the final problems in the previous chapter. And then the angular momentum of the particle is conserved. That means it's constant in time. Now these two properties are pretty easy to see from the form of the force. Because remember, um, the torque on the particle about the origin, remember, is R cross F. And because F has this form, R cross R is zero. The cross product of any vector with itself is zero. So this tells us that the torque is zero, which means angular momentum is constant. Now, angular momentum in three dimensions is a, it's constant. It's a constant vector. So a vector, a constant vector in three dimensions, defines a plane. That is a set of all vectors perpendicular to that vector. And that is the plane in which the particle moves. Okay, so these, you've seen these two before, even though you maybe didn't do those two problems, but you, you have access to the problem solutions. But that's what these uh, two properties are. Zero torque, angular momentum, conservation, just from the form of the force. And then there's another property that uh, seems a bit weird, first of all. The particle moves in such a way that the position vector, this r, position vector, sweeps out equal areas in equal times. In other words, the time rate of change in area is constant. Now this sounds weird the first time you've seen it, but this is referred to as a law of areas. This is one of Kepler's uh, discoveries. 
and we're going to see that it uh, will derive it and we're going to see that it's related to angular momentum conservation. Okay, it's a good place to stop right now. Good introduction, and in the next lecture we're going to derive equations of motion for the particle in the central force field. So, bye for now.